Hello, everybody. Welcome. And here are the potentials and possible predictions for 2023. The overall frequency that we're working with all year is that of earth and water. I've studied this time and again. I've even redone this video because Mars Retrograde is having me really correct things and improve them as much as I can. Maybe you're finding the same. You're having to redo things, but the next time you do them, they're coming out much better. So let's hope that's true for this video too. Earth and water predominate. Now, by the time we inch into 2024, when Pluto goes into Aquarius proper for the next 20 years, and in 2025, when we've got Neptune changing sign going into Aries, a new cycle. Also in 2025, Uranus will go into, uh, into Gemini. And in May of 2025, Saturn will go into Aries. So everything shifts, particularly 2025, six, that's why I did a special video about those years, into fire and air, completely different energies. But this year particularly, although Pluto pops his nose into Aquarius for three months, it's predominantly a year of focusing upon the energies of earth and water. Now, we can look at these on many different levels. Firstly, we can look at them on the physical level, becoming earthed, becoming purified, being sensitive to our senses. This is very sensual energy and the temptations that we have of the senses. There are many temptations out there of food and flavors and sights, things that we want to have. Oh, that looks nice, let me have one of those. Yes, so the senses are constantly getting um, activated. And are your senses being activated in a positive way? Are you looking actively for the good things? Doesn't mean to say that there aren't ugly things, but are you looking for good things or are you watching movies about conflict and violence? Yeah, what are you choosing in your everyday world? What are you choosing to listen to? Are you choosing to listen to the sounds of the birds? Are you also listening to truth? Or are you getting carried away by flattery? and people saying nice things to you. But in fact, that's not healthy for you at all. Yogananda said that flattery is like poisoned honey. So what are you hearing that is poisonous? The senses are going to be all issues to be looked at. And as much as you can, to be brought into an equilibrium. Let me break down the year for you into some bite-sized pieces, but most important is that you get this message that we start off the year with both Mars and Mercury retrograde. On the 12th, Mars will go direct. On the 18th, Mercury goes direct. But the flavor at the start of this year is one of reflection, is one of going inside, not being so much pulled outwards, but bringing yourself back to center, back to planet Earth, back to you on your two feet, to practicalities. All the Mercury retrogrades are in Earth signs, except the very last one, but that one goes into the following year. So I don't count that, but the main three are in earth signs. So anything to do with mother earth. And when you think about mother earth, I think of a slower energy. Yes, there's a peacefulness when you go out in nature, you can connect with your innate peace. 
as Lao Tzu said, nature does not hurry, yet everything is accomplished. So this year is about learning not to hurry, to rush, and through being centered in your own intuition, in your own guidance, you'll get everything done, probably in half the time. So with these retrogrades, Mars, Mercury, it may mean that the year gets off to a slowish start. We do have the holidays in many parts of the world, so that takes up a lot of time and energy. Sometimes people are exhausted, but use this time constructively to reevaluate your life. What do you want to accomplish this year? What do you want to change? What do you want to give? What do you want to improve? Ask yourself empowering questions. And in that very earthy, slow way, work on it consistently and assiduously. Okay, I've got certain things I really want to work on. Yes, learning to be calm. And nature helps. Water helps. Being by water, the sea, a lake, looking at a lake, imagining a lake. There are many ways, but these are important things that will help you to work in a constructive way with these energies. And the more people who are centered and grounded at this time, the easier it will be to deal with these massive changes that as a human family, we're going through. Yeah, I don't need to go into those. There's plenty of astrologers dealing with the more mundane astrology. Certainly America's going through its Pluto return. It's going through Many things are dropping away and it has to rebirth itself. So it's, it's a big, big time these years for America and America having the reserve currency has a lot of say in what happens to the rest of the world. So we're all deeply connected as we know, especially after the pandemic. The next big time, so we've got this sort of slow start, but a, a, an interiorized energy. Then we've got March. March is when Saturn goes into Pisces and Pluto will go into Aquarius for three months until June. Saturn will be in Pisces for almost three years. I've done a separate video about this, so check that video out if you want more detail. But this is a frequency shift and it's obviously a Saturn return for many of you, those of you coming up to age 28, 30 or 57, 58, 59 or eight, five, six, seven, eight, these years, you'll be going through a Saturn return. So there'll be endings, completions, but this is gonna be a time where anything to do with astrology, uh, this whole esoteric healing field, I feel could be very, could be legitimized at this time. And many of you who've wanted to get going in businesses in this area are really gonna get a lot of help from this Saturn. The Pluto in Aquarius is going to give us a sense of the power of technology that's coming. And the technology is going to have our brains whizzing. We're going to have more powerful phones, computers. And I think that during this Pluto in Aquarius time, it's a 20 year period, it's a generational period. I think that there's going to be a discovery that will be as big as electricity. Look how electricity changed our world. I think there's going to be another invisible kind of thing. You can't see it. Intangible that's going to change us. And we need to prepare ourselves. So this is a year of personal preparation, doing the groundwork on yourself, building muscles in areas where you know you need to build muscle where you know you're being lazy, where you know you've got to just say no to that extra cream cake or piece of chocolate or whatever it is that's your weakness that you suffer for later. The astrology can be read on many levels, you see, and I'm wanting to be able to take you through different possibilities so that hopefully 
you'll you'll sense that there's a real depth to the astrology. There's so much more than meets the eye. You are so much more than an Aries or a Taurus or a Gemini or a Sag or a Libra. Your chart has every bit of each sign, but in different measures. So some of us have got a lot of sweet signs. Some of us have got more savory signs. We have it in different balances. That's what brings the uniqueness. But somewhere you will have each and every sign. So the eclipses in April, May are going to be in Mars ruled energy. So these are going to be very active energies. And this is again, uh, an energy of forward momentum, but looking before you leap. I'll talk more about those when they come. Big significant change comes in May when Jupiter, planet of good fortune, abundance, changes sign, goes into Taurus. Big shift. Whatever Jupiter touches, it magnifies. Taurus has to do with money, finance, your gifts, your talents, your values, food, agriculture, survival, our earth, sustenance, sustainability our environment, how we spread riches. So these are all areas that I think will be growth areas because Jupiter expands. So you might want to consider getting involved in any of those areas, especially in terms of maybe work or business, because these, these, these will be areas that will have a great amount of potential. June, Pluto will go back into Capricorn until the end of the year. So that's another Earth energy. We get back down to Earth again. The eclipses here, as we move into October, are in Venus ruled energies. Libra and Taurus. This is gentler. This is softer. So we're going into this Taurus. Jupiter's in Taurus. It's a softening out of the edges going on as we come towards the end of the year. But what I wanted to show you was this overall picture that happens once we get past May. Okay, May, June, actually. In May, Jupiter goes into Taurus. March, Saturn in Pisces. Uranus is already in Taurus. Neptune is already in Pisces. And Pluto will be back in Capricorn from June. So the second part of this year We've got, these are all the outer planets, yeah? Jupiter stays in a sign for about a year, Saturn for almost three years, Uranus for about seven years, Neptune for about, mm, depends, uh, uh, 15, 16 years, varies, and Pluto up to 20 years. So these are what's known as the outer planets. They move more slowly, but they affect us more um, as a community, yes, as a whole, as the human family. Earth, water, earth, water, earth. The message couldn't be clearer. The Native Americans said, we don't inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. So the more aware we can be of the earth, an unknown poet said, there's no Wi-Fi in the forest, but I promise you'll find a better connection. So it's going to be important to get away from time to time from the craziness of the Wi-Fi and to find the silence and the peace within. And to really enjoy nature. Yeah, it's so beautiful. And in the speed of the rushing and the doing, a lot of the time I feel I miss it. You know, I, 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 go, I go walking a lot and I, I love it. But, you know, we could appreciate it even more. And Iris Murdoch beautifully put that people from a planet without flowers would think that we must be mad with joy the whole time to have such things 
about us. So let's get mad with joy with our planet, with appreciating our food, with appreciating all the tangible things that we have. Taurus energy asks you to simplify. What do you really need? What do you enjoy? To get good quality things rather than throw away things. Good things that last a long time, that's very Taurian. And the Pisces energy is about tuning in with everybody. Prayers, the power of our prayers for one another, for peace upon this earth, for compassion, for caring. And Pluto nearing the end of his transit in Capricorn. And just this um, really cultivating honesty, truth, integrity, and wise structures that serve everybody. So there you have it. That is the overall energy for this year, 2023. Enjoy colors, yes, colors, paintings, and tangible, beautiful things. Yes, you might want to uh, get a, a Pleiadian Oracle deck for the new year or as, or as a gift. Yes, and, uh, and let's see what, um, there we go. There's the card pulled for today. You're starting a new adventure. So these are all just paintings, yes, different paintings. And again, color, vibrancy with a, a message for the day or however you choose to use them. People use them in all kinds of different ways. So I just want to thank you, so many of you who comment, who share, who subscribe, who um, are, are with me on Patreon and different places. I just want you to know that I really do appreciate you. Happy 2023. Look for the good things. Much love.